Yoko by Rosemary Wells. What would you like for lunch today, my little cherry blossom? asked Yoko's mother. All my favorite things, please, answered Yoko. Yoko's mother spread steamed rice on a bamboo mat. She rolled up a secret treasure inside each piece. Then she packed it all in a willow-covered cooler. Have a wonderful day at school, my little cherry blossom, said Yoko's mother. I will, said Yoko. Yoko said hello to all her friends. Everyone in Mrs. Jenkins' class sang the good morning song. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, and how do you do? At noon, Mrs. Jenkins rang the lunch bell. Lunch boxes out and open, please, boys and girls, said Mrs. Jenkins. Timothy unwrapped a peanut butter and honey sandwich. Valerie had cream cheese and jelly. Fritz had a meatball grinder. Tulip had Swiss cheese on rye. Hazel had egg salad on pumpernickel. Doris had squeezed cheese on white. And the Franks had Franks and beans. Yoko opened her willow-covered cooler. Inside was her favorite sushi. Tucked in the rice rolls were the crispiest cucumber, the pinkest shrimp, the greenest seaweed, and the tastiest tuna. What's in your lunch? asked one of the Franks. Ick, it's green, it's seaweed. Oh no, said the other Frank. Don't tell me it's raw fish. Watch out, it's moving, said Doris. Yucko Rama, said Tulip and Fritz. Valerie blew the playtime whistle. Everybody out, said Valerie. Yoko did not want to play ball or swing on the swings. What's wrong, Yoko? asked Mrs. Jenkins. Everybody laughed at my lunch, answered Yoko. They'll forget about it by snack time, said Mrs. Jenkins. But they didn't. During the snack time song, Yoko opened her thermos of red bean ice cream. Red bean ice cream is for a weirdo, snorted the Franks. Mrs. Jenkins switched to the friendly song. Your friends are my friends. My friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Mrs. Jenkins knew the friendly song was not enough. Late into the evening, she fretted about Yoko. Finally, the answer came to her. Dear parents, Monday will be International Food Day at Hilltop School. Everyone is asked to bring a dish from a different country. Everyone must try a bite of everything. Happy cooking! From Mrs. Jenkins. We will make a deluxe sushi for the whole class, said Yoko's mother. Don't worry, my little cherry blossom. Everyone will try our sushi and everyone will love it. On Monday morning, Valerie and her mother carried a, in a plate of enchiladas. Timothy and his mother made Caribbean coconut crisps. Hazel brought Nigerian nut soup. Harry brought Brazil nuts. Doris brought Irish stew. Tulip brought potato knishes. Monica brought a picture of mango smoothies. Fritz brought spaghetti. Big Frank cooked up a pot of Boston Franks and beans. At noon, Mrs. Jenkins rang the lunch bell and everyone sang the clean hand.
different song. Wash, wash, wash your hands, wash your hands together. What does International Food Day mean to us, boys and girls? asked Mrs. Jenkins. Try everything, everybody said. When Valerie blew the playtime whistle, there was not a nibble of a nut or a sip of smoothie left. But no one had touched even one piece of Yoko's sushi. Yoko sat under the learning tree. Suddenly she heard the clickety-click of chopsticks. It was Timothy. He was still hungry. Uh, let me show you how, said Yoko. Timothy polished off the rest of the crab cones his own way. Can we have sushi again tomorrow, he asked. I'll ask my mother, answered Yoko. During the school bus song, Timothy found a coconut crisp in his pocket. He gave it to Yoko. It's even better than red bean ice cream, said Yoko. On the bus, Timothy and Yoko made plans to push their desks together and open a restaurant the very next day. And they did. They ordered tomato sandwiches and dragon rolls. For dessert, they had brownies with green tea ice cream, and they couldn't have asked for anything 